All right, my friends, welcome back to All Cars. It is time for another reaction video to a Motor Week retro review. This one has been pushed in front of me a bunch, and I'm really excited about it because it's the Maserati TC, well, excuse me, it's the Chrysler TC by Maserati, a fascinating car that never, ever should have happened and was a monumental flop that Lee Iacocca well, he came up with the idea, and then when it flopped, he blamed basically everybody but himself. The idea here was to take Chrysler, add some Maserati, add some Italian flair to it, and offer a sports coupe that was more upscale and would attract a more affluent buyer, really add some style to it. It could be argued that they took a Maserati body and a Chrysler engine and really combined the worst of both worlds, but, well, the the story is a little more complicated than that. It's beyond this reaction video, but it's pretty fascinating. This thing was only sold between 1989 and 1991 model years. They only sold about 7,500 or something like that total because that was the minimum their contract allowed for assembly in for the body parts, for, for building it in Italy, and it was a mess. It was really a mess. They offered a 2.2 liter turbocharged engine. They ended up offering a, a Mitsubishi 3 liter V6, and then they offered a 16 valve version of the 2.2 liter that had a, a block by Cosworth and pistons by somebody else and a, a Florida firm designed the camshafts, but it was built in Italy. It just ended up being a mess. And after this massive investment in Maserati and in this project that ended up being delayed almost five years, they ended up with something that looked exactly like a LeBaron, but was substantially more expensive with fewer color options than a LeBaron. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about its competitors here at the end, but I'm really excited to see this because I'm not expecting much, but in hindsight, I think it's a really cool car. It's a really good idea that was just incredibly poorly executed. But let's hear what they said when it was brand spanking new. Our week is made possible by Lucas Oil, TireRight.com, and RockAuto.com. For a car that's just making its debut, Chrysler's TC by Maserati already has quite a history. It was originally conceived as an image booster for Chrysler and a source of profits for financially strapped Maserati. Disagreements between Chrysler and Maserati continually delayed its debut and destroyed a promising relationship. All that's left now is the TC. And the question, was it worth the wait? We couldn't wait to answer that question for ourselves. So when the first shipment of production TCs arrived in January, we promptly arranged to have one delivered to our winter testing home at Savannah's Roebling Road Raceway. After five years of waiting, virtually everyone knows the basics behind the TC. Its Italian body is made by Maserati, but virtually all mechanical components are off the shelf Mopar parts. Unlike Cadillac Solante, which has final assembly in Detroit, the TC arrives stateside, ready to roll. And, and let me just interrupt there. So luckily they're going into some pieces that I said there at the beginning. Um, there's another competitor to consider. If they don't bring it up, I'll bring it up at the end. But basically they took a K-Car platform. This is actually a version of the Dodge Daytona. And after five years, they ended up with this. And for all the world, that looks like a LeBaron convertible. Now, granted, there's some cues along the way on the outside. That grill is a little more Maserati. They weren't a, they weren't exactly a styling leader in the 80s. But the rear end looks very much like a LeBaron. Um, an uninspired design for all of this effort, for all this time, and for all of what Italian flair you would want to get from it, they ended up with something that... It's just completely underwhelming. And it's a shame because trying to do a luxury sports coupe to attract more affluent buyers, and they mentioned the Cadillac Elante there, you think about what BMW or Mercedes or Jaguar would be coming out with. To end up with this, how was it even allowed to continue in this form? Uh, just um, 
a major, major mistake and a really missed opportunity. You can't help but compare the $30,000 TC to the nearly twice as expensive Elante. As far as bodywork and paint, the TC looks on par. This deep burgundy clear coat was flawless and the body panels without ripples. However, gaps in body trim around the TC soft top cover and around the wheel wells are inexcusable. The overall effect of the TC's interior is more luxurious than the Elante. Most of that appearance advantage comes down to the gathered hand-stitched leather on the six-way power seats. For long distance driving, support is good without the cushions being hard. Now, I want to just jump in here. So I miss these really plush pleated seats of the, uh, specifically the 80s and early, early 90s cars. Inside, it's, it's not earth shattering, but I think it's really beautiful. I like the color choice, it, you know, a little different from just having black or tan. Um, the seats look fantastic. These things started with a three-speed automatic and they eventually put a four-speed in when they put in the V6. Uh, but I particularly like the area behind the front seats. It carpeted with those rails on it. Uh, it gives almost a, uh, uh, boy, a, a boat vibe, right? Those uh, Italian wooden cruisers with the slats on them. I, I think the interior looks really good. We've showed you the behind the seat storage compartment before, but what we didn't show you is the spare tire that takes up all the room. A thoughtful emergency top cover release also resides there. The soft top itself is a model of simplicity. You raise it by hand with traditional latches at the windshield frame. Compared to the cumbersome Elante top, the TC's is near perfection. However, we were surprised that the top's back glass has no defroster. But then Chrysler figures owners will use the standard hard top in colder months, and it does have a defroster. While you need two people to handle it, as with tops from the competition, it's even easier to install than the hard top on the Mercedes-Benz 560 SL. The failing of all these removable hard tops is wind noise at speed, and here the TC is no different. As for speed, Chrysler was not thrilled that we took the TC to a racetrack. It's not a sports car, they proclaim, and we didn't expect it to be. However, it's not incompetent either. It pushes like most front drive cars and rolls like the luxury sports coupe it is. However, it's not tough to handle and overall is an easy car to master. The TC stops securely thanks to standard anti-lock brakes. Distances from 60 average to a short 118 feet, although there was some pull to the right. One reason the TC was delayed was to cure some of the body twisting found in early prototypes. We're happy to say the production car is much better, although still not as rigid as Chrysler's homemade LeBaron convertible. But we've saved the TC's major shortcoming for last. You expect more than four-cylinder engines and a 30 grand luxury car. RTC had Chrysler's buzzy 160-horse 2.2-liter intercooled turbo attached to a three-speed automatic. Acceleration from zero to 60 is a so-so 9.8 seconds. You know, and they said it, 9.10 seconds. Let's round up here. Yeah, that's okay. That's not going to get anybody's heart pumping. More about the engines in a minute. Prefer the no-cost option 2.2 engine with Maserati 16-valve head. Its 200 horsepower is transferred through a Getrag 5-speed. We doubt many of the TC's luxury clientele will order this better of the two powertrains. So back to our original question. Was the Chrysler TC by Maserati worth the wait? Well, that depends on your orientation. If you're a loyal Chrysler luxury car buyer looking for European flair and a lot of exclusivity, the answer is yes. However, if you are expecting a true Maserati at Chrysler prices, then you will be disappointed. While it is obvious that the TC is not a car we'd lust after, initial buyers are telling Chrysler otherwise. The rest of the cars that came over with ours were delivered to dealers on the West Coast. Sales have been so brisk that many dealers are charging $10,000 over list. Our car attracted a lot of attention too. Passersby were enthusiastic about the TC styling and sparkling paint. This all adds up to a better than expected beginning for the long awaited Chrysler TC by Maserati. Well, and that's not how the story ended up ending. Uh, they tweaked it and they massaged it and it ended up just being uh, 
two-year, three-year run failure. Um, mixed feelings about this because on the one hand, you know, look at the Cadillac Elante. It had a V8 engine, but twice the price. Let's consider that in 1991, its final year, this thing started at $31,000. Well, all you have to do is quick Google search and find out that's the equivalent of $77,000 today for a K car that looks like LeBaron, all right? We'll also consider that Buick had the Riata. It was Italian designed as well, roughly the same price with a standard V6. This is a hard sell. But ultimately, I like what they were trying to do. It just, it seems that it was let down by number one, a platform that was never meant to be luxurious, okay? Certainly not in the sporty, maybe grand tour realm. It feels like it was almost a generation too early. And number two is you've got Chrysler with a bunch of cash. You've got Maserati that was completely dysfunctional uh, at the time. and not terribly a styling leader to begin with. All they had was the name. And they came together with this. And there's parts of it I really like. I kind of dig this dashboard. There's some things like that climate control, like why is it so small? It still has got that 80s feel to it, but it looks luxurious. It looks soft. It looks comfortable. Three-speed automatic, I just want to say no automatically, but that still was not terribly out of place for the time. You know, it's not a sports car, but it's not as low, it's not as wide, it doesn't look as good as those GM offerings. I like the idea of this car, but no matter how you divvy it up and no matter how you make excuses for it, the LeBaron was a better vehicle. If you wanted this, there were some other options that were bigger engines, better frames, better looking. And then Chrysler had in their own stable a car that looked extremely similar, had a convertible, and was substantially cheaper with essentially the same gear, essentially the same options. This is kind of a shame because Ultimately, we know that Chrysler, after some gyrations, became a, another brand under the Fiat. You know, Fiat Chrysler includes Maserati. They all ended up together, but this was a really sad, to me anyway, really sad missed opportunity. Uh, if Chrysler and Maserati could have combined together and lifted each other up, they could have created some really special cars in the 90s but it wasn't meant to be. I've never driven one of these. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever seen one because I've seen plenty of LeBarons in the past. I could have seen one of these and just not known it. Um, but I would love to. Honestly, this is a car I would really like to spend a little time cruising around in. Just because I love this period, I love this period of Chrysler and it'd be interesting to drive this and see if ultimately what they don't mention here if any of that magic from Maserati came into it. Being based on a Chrysler frame with Chrysler engines or Mitsubishi engines, which were, you know, in many Chrysler vehicles, I don't think so. But gosh, it would be cool to spend some time with one of these. Let me know what you think below, guys. I appreciate you being here.